everyone. Welcome back. It's been a few weeks. Life has been busy, but we are back. And as we begin every video, we do a check-in. So how are you guys doing? How, how's it been? It's been a while since we've been together. It oh, I'm doing well. It feels like we haven't been together, but we have been together, just not at this, this capacity, right? True. I'm doing okay. I'm glad to kind of be back on another show. I'm super excited. Um, I think, you know, we're, we're going through a lot of transitions, so it's good to kind of be back. Yes, it's that, that uh, the, the regular routine, right? It, it's actually a good backbone for, yeah. you know, the discipline, the commitment and everything. So things are changing. Can you believe we're at the end of March already? Oh. Like, I remember when we were starting in September and we're all like, oh my gosh, how are we going to do school? You know, with the, with the, all the safety protocols. And here we are. We've done it, everyone. We've done it by living, by doing the habits. We've talked about the strategies, the, you know, all that. And we've done about 25-ish videos so there's a lot there. So if you're feeling like you need to just be reminded, have a recharge, a reset, feel free to access any Raiders Thrive videos. So let's uh, do a quick review of some of the things we've said over the past year. Wow, I don't even know where to start, but I know some of my favorite shows that we did have been all about really mental health, talking about different strategies to cope, um, really looking at how to maximize your health um, how to connect with people during the difficult times mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and also how to really kind of create a self-care strategy for yourself. Yes. Yes. How about you, Crystal? What, what are, what have been some highlights or what, what's some important, um, strategies or whatever that you'd like to emphasize to our lovely well, young viewers? I think that, you know, first and foremost, we've, like back in the day, we would just do what made us happy. We would go for a walk. We would go to Starbucks and get a coffee. We would, you know, call our friends or go hang out or go kick a ball or, or whatever. That just, that stuff just happened. And now that we've been living in this pandemic for as long as we have, we have to be intentional. That's what Michael says all the time is just be intentional with what you do. And when I meet with yeah. students, whether it's, you know, one-to-one -one or in larger group settings, I constantly, like the one question that I always ask is, what do you do for fun? What do you like to do for fun? Um, some students, well, they'll give me a laundry list, but there's some who are like, I don't know. And so it's hard because, you know, not knowing what it is that you like to do is going to impede on your, your mental wellness because, um, it's these little things that we do uh, uh, when we practice our self-care that nurtures that part, right? Because we need to have a balance. So oftentimes I find nowadays, more so nowadays than ever before, I'm like, I have to draw those, those things out of people. I'm like, do you like to cook? Do you like to bake? Do you like to sew? Do you like to knit? Do you like to draw? Do you like to do hair? Do you like to do makeup? Do you like to run? Do you like to exercise? Do you like to play ball? Do you like to, and, 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 and something besides video games but like I have this long list and then I get oh yeah I like to do that oh yeah I like to do that because when somebody else when somebody asks me what do you like to do mm -hmm. I can give you a list and I, and that list will just keep going and going and going and so I think that it's it's hard right now for some people because we're just we're exhausted and and it's it's been a long road and so we have to remember to be intentional and 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 think about those things that we like to do and be intentional when we do those things because um, those are the things that are going to nurture us and help us get through it right so yeah. it might seem incredibly like mediocre and not not really that big of a deal but if you like to just sit outside in the backyard like let's be honest the weather's getting nicer now outside in the backyard and read a book that's great you know and we need to draw on all of these things that we like to do and we need to put them like like right here with our academics because um you you have to nurture your mental health you have to practice self-care more now than ever in probably your life you need to practice self-care right so nope. so it's just it's, yeah. it's we have to we have to put it forth we have to remember we have to um, practice it and we need to be intentional when we're doing that you you bring a you bring up a good point and I, I I think it's worth if we've said it before it's worth repeating again 
before the pandemic, things were just naturally happening after school sports, after school clubs, you know, mm -hmm. art, art club, art council, student council, spirit weeks, and, you know, dances were being planned and, you know, just hanging out with friends and work and you go for coffee and you go out for lunch and all that. It just happened. The you pandemic. knew, you had your schedule well, and you knew yeah, Friday but, I have a birthday party here on Tuesday but see, I have basketball practice. Even, but even before that, it was just easy to do that because it was already happening. The yeah. pandemic stopped all that. And so if you just went with the flow before and now all of that is taken away from us and you just went with the flow, you didn't really take time to know what sparked your joy or what fed your soul or what you did for fun, however way you want to phrase it. Now with it being taken away, if you don't know what sparks your joy, then how do you get motivated to figure out what, what will feed your soul or, or, you know, what, it's harder because now it's been taken away. We can't just jump on something that's already running. Now we have to get the motivation, figure out what it is we want to do, acknowledge the pandemic and the safety protocols. So it takes a lot of effort. It's so much easier when life is already happening and we just, oh, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. Oh, my friends are going here. So I'm going to go with them. But now that those options are removed, it takes more energy. One, you have to figure out what feeds your soul? What do you want to do for fun? And then and then we have to be creative and think, okay, well, there's safety protocols, can't do this. So how do I do that considering the reality right now? So it takes more effort. So everyone, like you really have to summon up your strength and your courage and do that reflective, intentional work of, okay, what, what do I really need to do? What's really important to me? How do I be intentional with the self-care? What will be self-care for me? Because again, we talked about it's not a one size fits all. What works for someone else isn't going to work for someone else. You know, and like, I'll tell you, like uh, you know, I, I deal with my kids in the morning and then I come to school and we're dealing with students and, and issues and problems and, and whatnot all day. And then I go home and then I'm with my kids. But like I do all these things in between and I'm not lying around nine o'clock when I hear them horsing around in my room and they follow me everywhere. I'm like, hey. I, I need a timeout. You guys need to leave because by 9 p.m. I'm done. Like I just, I need quiet time. I need time to myself. Yeah. I need to just relax. And so what we're not doing is being mindful of that, right? Yeah. I think the yeah. big thing that I'm listening to both of you guys is, you know, the intention has to be there because everything has changed. And sometimes when change happens, we, uh, we still try to go with the old flows without understanding that those things might not work anymore. So this is where you have to really kind of take a few steps back look at what's working, of course, mm -hmm. and then, you know, look at what's not working and then try to make the changes. And if you look at it carefully, critically, it is very much possible to execute this. So um, that's one of the big things about we've been covering each and every week, it's really mm -hmm. talking about how you can um, create that intentionality and, you know, make sure that, you know, you kind of operate in not just like a robot. Because a lot of times before the pandemic, we've been robots, even to learning, even to, yeah. we yeah. took we took everything for granted. Yeah. And we just um, went through now, the motions. Through yeah. the motions, every, because everything was working. If it's, if it's not broken, why fix it? But now we're being challenged, you know, to really look at all areas of our life, you know, and really put together a new plan that will be, that will help us kind of create that sustainability, that consistency, those routines and habits that help us really cope well. So um, I'd, that has, I'd say the, the different, another way of putting it or more terminology for this is before we're just kind of reacting and, oh, friends are going up for lunch. Oh, they're going there. Okay. I'll go, I'll go there. Or I'm just going to go to the calf, right? We kind of reacted to what was available to us. Now we have to be proactive, mm -hmm. which, which really assumes an intentionality. So now, and, um, Sam said a really wonderful thing this morning, uh, you know, on the on the morning broadcast, because I, I asked, you know, I haven't seen her in ages. And I said, so how are you doing? It's been over a year in the pandemic. And she's been taking this time to try new things. And so she got into tennis. Would she have gotten into tennis if it was regular school all along and this never happened? Maybe, maybe not. That's so, it. so maybe this is a time for you to try, try some new activities that you maybe always wanted to try but never had the chance, well, make time. Because now is the time, you got time. That's it, Yeah, that's it, very true. 
And another, oh, I, I wanted to share another thing. I had a conversation with a student. Uh, she reached out because she wasn't sure how the self-care worked. And looking at the student, you would think this person gets it. This person understands self, self-care. As we were chatting, uh, you know, this person just likes to stay busy and, and do a lot of things. And I, I was just bringing up, careful, you don't spread yourself too thin, da, da 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 whatever. And then I gave her the tip of when you look at your schedule for the week or for the next day, work in time for you, whether it's, you know, playing an, an instrument, reading a book, doodling, going for a walk, whatever. And this was kind of new to her or news to her mm -hmm. that, oh, you mean I actually work it in my schedule? So that's what we're saying. You, be intentional. So if you do, you know, you're in school from 8.30 to 11.30, uh, you know, if you're in one of the cohort A or B, you're going home, you know, VAS is from 12.30 to, to, I don't know, roughly 1.30. And then it's period two. You might want to eat lunch. If you don't have to go to VAS, you go to period two at 2.30. Maybe that's where you work in a half hour, 45 minutes of just you time, intentional you time of turning off school going for a walk, transitioning, and then you like you work it in your schedule. Whether you want to play, you know, whether you play guitar or you play piano or you want to do yoga or you want to go for a walk or but you work it in your schedule. You don't just say, okay, homework, 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 and then, you know, just sort of eat dinner in there and then you just keep doing homework. Work it in your schedule. Yeah. So Self-care brings for a different level of accountability. I think even the roots of the word self-care it's, you know, a lot of times we're engaged in a very busy lifestyle, whether it's as a parent, as a student, as a child, uh, you know, doing many things to kind of, you know, juggle your responsibilities and you need that time for yourself, you know, mm -hmm. so really the roots of self-care is intentionality. You know, you kind of actually looking at yourself, looking at how you're functioning, looking at your daily routine and saying, what do I have for me? What do I have that, whereas everything else subtracts, yeah. What do I have that fills me up? You know, because there is, there always has to be those things. Sometimes school, it's not that school is a dream, but it is a dream. All those good for you. Sometimes the things that are good for you drain you. Mm -hmm. So self-care, yeah. because those are responsibilities. You have to do it to advance. But self-care, even if you're, you like doing, say, piano and you, you're the best at it, Self-care doesn't mean you keep doing piano 24-7. Self-care means doing what else can you do. If mm -hmm. piano is something that is excessively draining you, even though you're the best at it, what can you do that puts back into? Yeah. Think you, of you it, know? think of it like a gas tank for a car, my friends. If you're driving a car and you're always using the gas and using the energy, but you don't stop at a gas station to fill up your tank, That's guess it. what? The car's gonna break down. So kind of like us, we use energy as much as I love people and I'm, I'm an ambivert. I'm equally an extrovert and introvert. I love people, but it's draining to deal with people, not mm -hmm. because they're ne a negative. It's just, it uses energy. So we have to do stuff to fill our tanks. So just make time for you to fill your tank so that you're not running on empty. You know, and I've said it before, my self care once a week, I have to have my cultural food. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about it today while we're on right now. I'm already thinking about that drive to pick it up and I know awesome. what I'm going to order. So awesome. that's what it's all about. You see my smile on my face as I talk about this. Yeah. That makes my week all worth it. Yeah. It's uh, food too, right? Like I love food, food. I'm telling you. So it helps, you know, sometimes that's why you hear people, your parents say, guys, I just need a day. I want to go out to eat tonight. That's all part of self care, right? You know, those things that really kind of make us excited, those those cheat days, those days that, you know, kind of break the routine and kind of give us that recognition of life and, you know, kind of doing things that make you feel excited again. Oh, man. So I'm we want to mention... I'm massage today, guys. I'm really yes. excited. I and haven't yes, been in over a year. Like You're going to love it. I, I'm so, I, I'm so yeah. excited to go. And I booked for an hour and a half. Normally I do 60 minutes. Today I'm like, not nah, 90 it is, my friend. Oh, you're going to love it. You may fall asleep there too. That's yeah, self-care. Oh, that's awesome. So little things like this and don't consider it. Uh, well, no, I'm not going to tell you what you, you know, whatever, but it's a lot of people say it's selfish to do this. It isn't because if you're running on empty and you have no energy and you're just snapping at everyone, 
you're not doing anybody any justice or any service by not taking care of yourself. So we have to look after ourselves. Absolutely. So having said all that, we want to talk about how uh, we're going to shift kind of the format for our Raiders Thrive videos. So next week is Good Friday, so there's going to be no episode next week. Our next taping will be April 9th, so that'll be the, the first week of Easter. And what we're going to do is we're going to have another guest on the show, various representatives from agencies that support students and their families, so you and your family, that are available here in South Oakville or Halton region that support us in, in some way or another. So we will talk with them, ask them questions. If you would like us to ask a question to these partners uh, in you know supporting partners of mental health, please let us know. You know how to email the three of us and we could possibly ask your question. And, and please, we open it up to parents to watch because now we are, we are bridging out and we'll, we'll be introducing you to all the lovely people in your neighborhood who support mental health and who we work with. That sounds great. I'm super excited. Um, and I think it's going to be a very good turn for the show. Yes. And it's all about informing you and helping you be informed of what's available out there. Every time you say that, I keep thinking of the Sesame, the Sesame Street song, These Are the People in Your Neighborhood. These are the people in your neighborhood. Yes, and, and they are, right? So thank you, Mr. Asiyama and Crystal. And we will uh, see you in two weeks. Take thank care, you. Good, take yeah. care, everyone. Have a good Holy Week. Have a good Easter. And we'll see you the first week of Easter.